Let's talk about how to create the perfect portfolio for your design school. You found your dream design school, but now there's the next obstacle right in front of you. You have to create a portfolio to apply. I remember how I created my first portfolio when applying to my dream design school a couple of years ago. For me, it was a long and hard way. And if I'm totally honest, I think I got quite lucky with getting accepted with my portfolio back then. But since then, I've seen many successful portfolios. But now I can give you some tips that can help you to create a killer portfolio that gives you the best chance to get accepted to your dream design school. Starting off with definition. Read through the guidelines and then create a list to cross off. Because most of the time, the university gives you a guide on what they want to see. And if you have any questions about words, Google it or write a comment. But try to research your university. If you followed the last video, you are already in contact with some students. So just ask them what they would recommend. Are there any unknown guidelines, preferences of professors? But in general, the most important things are showing who you are, your process, your level, and also that you understand what you're applying to. Because I know a couple of people that have big problems because of that. The application looked a lot more like it would be for a different department than the one they applied to. In general, I can also really recommend going there if your university's professors offer their advice on portfolios. But to get optimal value out of it, do that a little bit later when you have already finished some stuff. Actually start working on it. First, collect everything you already have. If you are like me, you probably also did art and small projects your entire life before. As a heads up, a lot of it will not be appropriate for university, but that is okay. If you already have some things prepared, it's better than nothing, right? A friend of mine, for example, used their project of kitting out a van and it was a great one because it showed technical skill, planning and everything beyond that. So yeah, just think about that. And now create a journey or concept or story, if you will. This is important because you want to take people on a ride. An example of this might be focusing on your hometown or daily items. This is just so that your whole portfolio doesn't feel like it's just a pile of different kind of things. So try to find a concept on how to connect it all. And it will be much easier for the examiners to understand, but also for you to make, because you know what you're looking for. And probably the most important thing on this journey, somehow show your uniqueness. The examiners see many portfolios, but why will they remember you? But now, after the creation stage, got some words of warning first, because many, for this stage, go to a portfolio preparation class. And honestly, I don't know if I can recommend those. Just for transparency, I myself never did one of those. But a couple of friends did, and also a lot of other people I know. And how well they really work, it's very debatable. They probably try to prepare a lot of people for the same university every single year. And they created a routine for this, meaning that most portfolios from that preparation class will look similar one day or another. And the professors, they will just know. Where is your uniqueness in that? If you don't feel comfortable with the way you're drawing right now or something like that, maybe just take drawing classes, but not in the context of preparation for this thing. That is what I can just recommend you. If this video was helpful so far, I would really appreciate if you booped the like button. And let's go on. The same with how you should go about creating your portfolio. Because of this, you will need a lot of time and put a lot of effort into it. So set yourself up for success. You have to schedule regular times to work on this consistently, depending on when you want to finish it by probably a couple of hours every single day, maybe five or so. And I know this sounds like a lot, but it's very important to put in regular time to one, get better at all the technical skills, consistently make progress on your portfolio. Because I always worked in big bursts of energy and then stopping for a while. And it was hard and harder to motivate myself to really go at it again. And you really don't want that to happen to you and take very regular breaks depending on what works best for you. Around five minutes every 25 minutes, around 15 minutes every 45 minutes. But those are just guidelines and try to find your own rhythm. And while working on it, try to get as much feedback as possible. And in the best case, very regularly. If you want, you can ask me to look over it or any other friends you have. There's also a lot of websites out there where you can see what kind of portfolios got accepted to which school. And I know for many things, you should not compare yourself. But in this case, it makes sense. You want to see if the quality of your work is up to par with the one of other applicants. But a good source of feedback could also be the professors themselves. Because like I said, there are regular events where you can just ask the professors which will be reviewing your portfolio later on where they see need for improvement. This is not a must. You don't have to do this. 
but I can recommend it. And so, while slowly creating your portfolio, tick off the items on your list. Are you showing your technical expertise? That you can draw? That you understand things? Your workflow? And if you have enough content, and can finally tick off every item on that list, you are finished. But are you really? Because even if you get invited, there's still the examination coming up. And that could make or break everything. So watch my next video on how to perform your best in there.